And welcome back to the Beyond the Summit Studios with our coverage of the SEA Boston Major Qualifiers. We're into our, I think, second or third to last series here of the night. Something like that. It's like yeah, getting late. I lost count. It is getting late, definitely. Um, we are I am, we are in game right now with Faceless and Signature Trust. We're going to talk to you at least a little bit about that game here coming up. Uh, but I am Nahaz. I'm here with Draskal and Lyrical. Guys, enjoying the night so far? Yeah, it's an awesome. We're tired. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. I mean, it's more like a, I woke up at 5 a.m. and in three hours I will have been up for 24 hours. Oh my so god! So I'm a little tired. What a trooper! Yeah, a my little. two-year-old woke me up at six. So yeah, yeah, always fun. I slept until like one or something. It was nice. You can leave. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> all right. Can you just kick him in the nuts? <laughs> I, I really should. Yeah, I think that would be more than fair. I'm sorry, guys. All right, so we're going to go ahead and, uh, if we can, we're going to go ahead and take you into the game right now as Faceless and Signature Trust are underway. We'll talk to you at least a little bit about that game. I think we have that being cast here. Uh, guys, quick thoughts on the draft here, though. Mm. I, I actually think that both teams are pretty solid. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess the one thing you could argue is that it's kind of hard to kill Weaver if you're Sig Trust. I mean, they have Sand King stun and to potentially arrow, but outside of that, they are lacking a little bit of catch. And I think that in general, Faceless are probably one of the, you know, if not the team, really, in the qualifier here for the C region. Whereas Sig Trust are very volatile. They've looked so freaking good. Faceless is just like, every time I've been watching them play, they've kind of been blowing me away. And I don't want to, I don't want to give too much credit and be called like a fanboy or something, but. Too late. I know. They're so freaking good. I love them. Yeah. I actually really, I like this draft on both sides. You, you've got a lot of comfort hero picks. Of course, the Kells Morphling. Uh, been legendary for a long time. I actually really do like the Abba Sand King. And, of course, on the other side, uh, Black's Weaver is something that's been a little bit underrated, I feel. He's, of course, known for his Invoker and his Animage. Uh, but uh, Weaver among the other heroes that he does play quite well. I think it's just a nice Weaver game, honestly. Yeah, it really is. Just I mean, not, if, not much lockdown on the other side. If you make it out of the laning stage, you should be fine. Because, I mean, I see Sig Trust that they, they have on Thying. We've seen a lot of emphasis on that hero, actually, in the C region. I don't think that NA and E you really value it quite as highly. Can still be good situationally, but it seems like lane aggression is something that the C region loves to do. Yep. Just go crazy. I mean, and it's also something where I, I I mean that's getting like first round banned for some teams, um, which kind of blows my mind because I, I feel like if you take that hero so early, then you can't kind of answer it because like if you go late game against it, like you can get an Ags, but that's not really going to transition into being like this sort of it give the same value as something like a lion hex in the late game or um, you know think about dazzle grave but i don't know it seems like they're feeling willing to work with it and i i kind of feel like signature trust has been doing okay this tournament but uh up against faceless it, it feels hard for me to imagine that they're really going to be able to pull away with this one uh, they're doing okay though in this bottom lane matching up i mean marana is of course uh behind the weaver in cs but they're fairly even in levels and standing the ground against a very good lane support in the warlock yeah i guess we'll have to see like the rotations you know if the, if the sand king gets like a decent blink timing you could see a lot of stuff happen because even more flank can come to fights you know a lot of people have him kind of pigeonholed into this hero that doesn't really do anything until he has e-blade but the reality is you could, you're still extremely tanky, yeah. and you have a very high damage nuke during the early game. And if you, if you even get an early point into Adapted, you can still get kills quite easily. So, yeah, we'll see what they do. I, I would kind of like them to apply some sort of pressure, because you have this really high magical damage burst, which can kill a hero like Weaver, but it is dependent on, again, the blink from the Zang King. Timbersaw is such a ridiculous hero. Look at him go. He's just not even going to care. Nerf his base strength by one. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, it's going to make this. all the difference. He's got two points in reactive. He's just like running at him. And Lakel's, I mean, he kind of just can't do a whole heck of a lot about it. He's down to super low HP, like constantly. Um, but he's been staying alive, which is, I mean, I don't know. I guess it's it's pretty good in this lane. If Rubik keeps on roaming back into there, do you think they can find a kill at level <laughs> six or something? Uh. I mean, maybe. I suppose it's possible. When you have Chakra Room available, too, you're talking about Timber, right? Yeah, Timber, timber killing Eric, the Morphling. Yeah. I don't think that they're going to kill mm, Timber, that, right? That should not happen. <laughs> really? I mean, it, sh it shouldn't happen, but I've seen a lot of things today that should happen. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Like, a lot of them. Actually, yes. The in, more in Dota that I watch and the more I learn about the game, the more I realize that my knowledge means literally nothing. That that Kai P Monkeys Forever stack game yeah, that you were watching earlier? When they had the Ember Spirit and the, uh, the Terror Blade, 
and they had a storm on the same team. <laughs> wait, wait, excuse me? <laughs> they had an ember, they had a storm, and they had a terror blade on the same team. Did somebody misclick during the draft? Dude, that's what I what thought. The when what I they were won. the lanes? And they, they won. Oh, they, oh, no, they didn't win. No, they actually they were winning super hard because I guess like Kaipi threw or something, and then they counter threw and then lost. I don't know. I, I my mind was just like blown because I stopped watching the game. I thought they had won, right? <laughs> And then as as you generally would when you're ahead with those three heroes. On the it's same a tricor, and they're all ridiculously far. I'm like, okay, they won. Sweet, next game. Nope, didn't win. Wow. Sand King, was has he been mid the whole time as well? It's a pretty interesting little dynamic there. I guess with the Marana down there bottom, it's kind of an interesting answer to TA. I mean, I think you could still get hit by side blades if you're in Sandstorm, but at the same time, yeah. you know, Caustic is still annoying. Right. You have to still pay attention to it to some degree so you don't get your refraction broken and stuff like that. So, yeah, it works out okay. He actually he played the, the, the max Caustic no points in Sandstorm build, so. Yeah. I mean, it makes so. sense. When you're mid, you want to try to get as many points into it as you can to just farm. I mean, he's 34 CS. He's, he's owning. All right, so, so how do you guys see this game going? Big advantage to Faceless? Mm, I mean, uh, because of the team, I think so. Oh! <laughs> Kill that bug. <laughs> Get it off of me. <laughs> I Got think it. I think faceless are going to kind of go insane. I mean, they do have a good amount of catch, um, as it looks like Undying deny himself to a neutral um, for the Weaver. But if he gets pretty far ahead, like they they basically just have Burrow strike afterwards, and then like trying to blow him up with Morphling. I think yeah, they're fairly all in with the mid sand king. If the hero gets a blink and doesn't do anything, it's it spells pretty bad stuff for for Sigtrus. Yeah, uh, the between the between the Saint King and the Undying, you know that that's kind of a an all in e hero as well. Where if he's not able to get a lot done during the laning phase, uh, he's still it's a little bit lesser than it used to be because of the Ags. Yeah, I mean ten strength decay is is no joke, but still. I think there's another issue too with Sigtrus is they um. They don't have really a dedicated tower hitter, and that really stems from a lack of physical damage. So these are the types of games where you would typically see Mirana go into Aghanims and then buy like right-click items instead of going straight for like the, you know, the E-Blade, for example, or whatever that we normally see. Oh Just boy, because you need it. to be able to kill buildings. Go, go! Oh, is he gonna get it? So much damage. <laughs> oh, Cut. the clutch grave. That's nice. I mean, he was switching over to strength farm, but oh. that was literally wow. first blood at seven minutes, and Timber died. All right, I might take over the camera in a second. Remember here. that time where you said that stuff happens that shouldn't happen? Yeah. Yeah, that was. But that yeah. was Sand King as well coming up there, I guess. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna switch that over. I'm gonna take over camera. Oh, are you really gonna? Wow. Okay. We're gonna do it, guys. This All is right. gonna happen. Dota two. Thank God somebody's the picking up my game. slack because I am just. Oh, they don't have my hotkeys though. I'm just a though. flamer at this point. I don't even know why I'm here. Yeah, I, I do think, by the way, that we're ha we. I do think that we are casting this game, so we could, you know, be lazy and just hand it off to our regular casters if you wanted to. I don't think we are. Oh, we're not. Oh, okay, no, 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 we're not. We were. Oh, we're not. All right, we're yeah. definitely staying here. Then, we were told this, this specifically that we're doing two different games at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, a good yeah. call. Yeah. Let's do that. My my settings aren't good, so it's not going to be as smooth as beautiful as my camera work normally is in anyways. But Wait, is that <laughs> are we even on that PC? You dude? can't do it from that PC. You'd have to switch. Oh, okay, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. switch it over. Never mind. Rob's a golden god. Oh He's got man, back. our production guys, they're sweet. What a wonderful. I mean, I thought it would be easier for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, one to there two, eight minutes in. It's been like much less intense and like crazy fights as we've seen from any of these uh, SEA games. Yeah, but Sigtrust wants a hectic game. They don't want a farm fest. I don't think they're ever happy with a farm fest. Because like Timber can push a lane super fast, you have a TA and a Weaver. And the other thing is too, when, when you have like this semi tricor and you have to commit multiple heroes to kill every single one of them, eventually they're just going to get farm. Yeah. It's, it's just a pure numbers game at some point. Hmm. We'll see if Sigtrust can do it. Definitely an unfortunate uh, we'll be getting there, and now with Jab's going to be able to pick up a huge Ancient stack. This might be a bit mm -hmm. of a problem. It's going to be... I mean, Sanking, like, a couple hundred gold off is not even that off his blink. That's a good point. Little guy. But, they're, boy, they're really... They're oh kind of all in on those first couple blink epies, though. I mean, if they could find the TA right here, I don't know if that's a kill. Like, you have to wait for a fraction to be down. Epicenter's pretty close. If he had one more, he could kill the TA when uh, Epicenter's up. I'll just go for it. 
Just be a person. He what is, a guy. He's giving him the old harass. It's fine. <laughs> Space created. They're wrapping around on oh, the other side. Oh, that's a too. nice trap. Oh. Is that their ward or is that Sig's ward? That's Sig's ward. That's Sig's ward. They go in again. Oh my god, I actually can't see the things. All right, we we're we're gonna give up on this one. I can't. I don't have my my little thing, so we're just gonna go back to that. Wonderful. You gave it a solid two minutes. <laughs> yeah. All right. I mean, that's 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 some effort. It's really all we can. That's ask. like a D for effort, dude. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm used to it. It's fine. <laughs> all right. So Saint King is gonna have his blink flying out of the courier right now. They did, unfortunately, just blow the Morano ult. Yeah, I don't even know where they... I guess that they're going to try and take down Black in the bottom here. And that should be a pretty easy kill if they bring in another. And it looks like they do have the Morphling with them. Yeah, but he's... Black's just got to have fast finger there, and he's fine. Right. I mean, he has 800 HP. Oh, he's Squish. That's, that's the thing about Weaver is, like... There's this window in the game where the Sand King has Blink, and there's like one other nuke where you will literally just die every time to that gank. But if you can anticipate the gank and dodge it like two or three times and get enough money to get even a point booster, then you can pretty much live through it. All right, well, they did scan out and saw that the Dazzle was there, and that might be enough to get Black a little bit too afraid. Hmm. God, they're going for like Rubik's a super long K. wraparound. Dude, this is the long con, okay? <laughs> Look at that. You bait him. You think there's no way they're possibly wasting this much time trying to kill me. Oh, keep your eyes on it. I believe. <laughs> they're not going to go yet. I, I don't believe. All right, dodges the arrow. They're moving in now. It's going to happen. There's the epicenter. Black brought He's down. Done. There you go. The long con. Dude. You guys called it. ABBA. It works every time. That's so painful if it doesn't work. Dude, it's... I mean, imagine if that fails. You just wasted, like, two minutes of your time and your blink. But that's your why it works, because <laughs> the core player is sitting there, yeah. and he's like, dude, there's right, no right, way actually. that they're sitting here for this long. That's something that KP used to do all the time as well. He was just going to, like, he, he sat in the trees constantly is for, Timber like, dead? five minutes at a time. He might be. Is Timber dead? Uh, yeah, blink in three. He's dead. Uh, he's making oh, it. Oh, no. Ice, ice, ice. Say it ain't so. Oh, well, turn around. Oh, Holy no, crap. he's not. Uh, the timber has no mana, though. All right. Well, they at least Wait, saved the one, gank. He might have one shock room. They're not going to be able to get that one. Okay, yeah. I mean, they, they saved them, but they didn't do anything with their rock, right? <coughs> I don't know. I don't think they even get the tower. Oh. oh. Damn. I mean, it's just an undying, but yeah, it's nice. Still. They saved the timber, it's worth. Just an undying. That's a zombie, dude. They get stronger closer to Halloween. That's how it works. Yeah, there's a zombie on your lawn. Oh, I, what if they What if they patch Dota as right. we see oh, Rubik just destroy Tazzle? Oh, I love that. Um, Did he have stolen decay? He had, he had stolen decay, yeah. What if they patch the heroes around the seasons? And, like, CM got better in the winter. You had to die and get better closer to Halloween. We'd have a real did stale we invite, meta. Did we invite Sir Action Slacks to the sub? Get out of here, man. <laughs> Every time Jake. What if I got a new? I got an idea for a new Agonyms, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, <God>. Sorry. <laughs> Poor Jake. How are you going to do that? To he me, knows man? I love him. Who's soaking the Sand King's lane now that he's just roaming? Or are they just battling? I guess it would be Marana, right? Most well, of the time. She's not there with them. She's here trying to fight, too. No, I know, but I guess, like, of all the heroes that would make use of farm, Murano would probably be the second best oh, yeah. if it wasn't uh, Lakel's. Yeah. <coughs> She's, what, 2,500 off Vags? Yeah, I mean, ar long ways uh, arguably, you can, you can make a case that she has higher priority until she gets Ags up. Oh. No, oh, that was an arrow. Oh, no. God. Well, XY is still stuck there. They don't realize it, I guess. Dude, do you know what, why those arrows happen? Because you, you click the low ground, assuming that the low ground line is going to be yes. the same line as yes. the high ground, and it's not. You actually have to click on the hero for those arrows. Otherwise, you oh. have what you just saw there. Get over there. I believe in you. Marana takes down TA. All right. That's yeah, the, the, the geometry of those arrows, low ground to high ground, is just bizarre. I get hit by arrows because, I, like, for instance, if you're mid and you see an arrow coming from the river and it goes up the stairs, it, like, totally just mind wrecks you. You're yeah. like, wait, what? How it, like, did I get hit by that? It, climbs the stairs, yeah. All I heard is you got hit by arrows. Dude, so. I'm an arrow magnet. <laughs> I'm an <laughs> arrow magnet, hook magnet, 
the thing that's crazy is I can dodge hooks better than I can dodge arrows. I, I make your skill shots look good. That's my motto for Dota. I mean, everyone who's played Marana against me knows. <laughs> they are like heat-seeking arrows when I play that game. Uh, here in Epicenter. Yeah. Oh. Wait, all right. The temper? Oh, okay. okay. Well, that's something. That's four heroes around Ice Ice Ice, and they're all going to run away. Do not feel comfortable with that one. I mean, they have the right game plan, though. You, you just yeah. literally need to throw your body at the enemy team. They're you playing can't, this really well. If you can't kill the Weaver, you have to kill somebody else. You know, because it's going to end up being like one of those like Tricore versus Tricore games. Yep. But you have to be pressuring someone at some point in time. All right. Well, disconnect. Unfortunately, hopefully but the I dime mean, comes back and joins us. At some point, the it's Tricor versus Tricor, but at some point, the Sand King is the third part of your Tricor, and that's gonna. Yeah, of course. Yeesh. I'm not well, saying. I do, I do like his Sand King. They're not gonna scale at the same rate, that's for sure. Like the Weaver and the TA will eventually get to a point where you're gonna be relying almost solely on the Marana, or not the Marana, the Morphling, to be able to yep. to deal with them, and that's gonna be an issue. I think I like the Morphling more than like the TA and the Weaver almost more combined. You got enough stuns around oh, it. No, no, no not, not a about chance. Not Late game split pushing? How are they going to deal with the Morphling? Like if Quit he goes drinking. If he okay. goes Manta style and think just like this, pushes right? down lanes. Morphling versus Timber split push. Timber kills the creeps infinitely faster than a Morphling. Okay. And then you also have to keep into account boots of travel are an item. Right. So if the Morphling starts to split push, the TA, the Weaver, and the Timber all just buy bots. And they are also much harder to gank. Like, sure, Morphling might not die to any of the ganks that Faces are going to throw out, but they have cores that are extremely safe to split push, and they have multiple. Whereas Morphling is pretty much the only one who can go out and feel super safe. Like, maybe Mirana, maybe Sanking, but they're not going to push at the same rate. The only thing that I'm going to say is that, like, I've, I've seen so many of these games, even with good wave clear, where Morphling just takes over at a certain point in the game. I mean, I can't really do anything about it. I'm not saying that an E Blade combo isn't strong. Yeah. And I'm not no, saying it that is. the, it the is. hero can't split push. I'm just saying, like, but the likelihood of him outscaling a TA and a Weaver and a Timbersaw. I also feel like the most important point that you made there is that a lot of people still underestimate the extent to which Boots of Travel just. Rex split pushes. Yeah. Like that, that is, uh, there's a reason that you started to see people go like some crazy first item boots of travel on Razor. Yeah, that was, that was a TI actually. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's a really good answer. I think it was, it was Wings, right? Wings who started doing that? Uh, no, I think, I actually, I think Envy had played around with it before. I oh, saw yeah, 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 you're right. Envy did it too. Oh, Abba, they get the arrow. <laughs> He's still going to go down though. Yeah. Oh, but I mean, the, the other thing too is that it's not necessarily just the heroes themselves, but it's also how they itemize. Yes. Like the Sand King is, he's going for like the standard, I'm playing a support style of Sand King, even though he had a mid. Yeah. So like his scaling's not going to be, you know, anywhere near what a, a Weaver, a TA, a Timber are going to be bringing to the table. Because their items are a lot of the time pretty set in stone. I guess the other thing is that I still don't like the Undying like game, like comparing him to the Rubik. That feels rough. And also, I just think that Faceless are probably yeah. going to be playing a stronger game. Um, but I think Sig Trust have the pieces with which to do it. Nope. it you don't think so? No, I, I was actually going <laughs> to agree. I wanted to stop you because I was I was going to amplify part of the point that you just made. I thought it was really important was that the other error that people make a lot, I feel like, in analyzing some of these games is um, scaling is not just a function of your like God. two hardest carries. You, you got to look how the lineup scales one through five. Like the fact that they have a Warlock versus the other team's Undying, that's a very, very big deal. Like, think about the game that we just cast. Yeah. I mean, the most at some point in, in the game, there is going to be a point where the most important item is actually Warlock's Refresher. Oh, my God. Look at him go in. Lakels is trying to get oh, out of there. Sadly. Oh, my God. <laughs> if he oh. sent a turnaround onto Rubik. Black, time lapse. They're not going to be able to do it, though. Uh, and they only lose the Rubik, but they took down that Marana a little bit earlier, and there's going to be a tower. Oh, nice stun. Well, maybe the not. Decay? Morphling? Okay. Abba going to try and get out of there himself. Sand King actually going to be able to survive, and, well, they deny the tower. Yeah, that was pretty well played by both sides, actually. Only supports died. Nothing of value was lost. Let's move on. Man, you're such a core player. Out. Dude. <laughs> Reported. Feels, feels good to have net worth, you know? Makes you feel more important than everybody. Mm. 
No, I, I think that um, I'm gonna kick you too. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys both four players? Am I? Yeah. Am I so nice. Yeah. All right. So who's four and who's five? Who do I, I, I am super five. Where are my All right, boards? Yeah, it's good. I, I like my. I, I like to play my four. Yeah, Rob, you can play mid, dude. Oh God, what did we just commit to? He's fine. He's like three K, right? He's solid. He knows how to last it. Okay. I know how to. I don't know. Buy wards. I can pull pretty well. You know. <laughs> can you pull through though? Can you pull from camp to camp? I can. I can actually do the the medium camp on the the radiant side. There you go. You're like five K already. Nah. Dude, <laughs> I, I've met 5K plus players who can't, can't do yeah, that. Yeah. And I'm just like, how do you even tie your shoes in the morning? <laughs> okay, wow. I'm, I'm pretty harsh when I play ranked. I've watched your stream, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fair. Like, you know, they tried hard and they're not good, so just yell at them and it'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> I think we have a, a special thing called the, the rocket ship to the sun. We, we put a lot of people on during Dota days. <laughs> Oh I feel like way more people should be put on that in general, but yeah, maybe that's yeah. just me. You know. Oh, jumped upon, stealing epicenter. Nope. Okay. Oh, that, oh, oh okay. my God! Not he quite. Oh, did he channel it up? It didn't look like he was able to channel it. Now, chase yeah, away. Ooh, oh, he, he doesn't make it out, but no, no, he doesn't. Yikes! I think he had fatal bombs on. He just got splatted have. by the warlock. Did Rubik use it? He, I think he used epicenter, but he canceled the. I didn't that see the animation, so I assume yeah, he might He did a little canceled. like woovy, wavy thing, but then it didn't show up the, the stuff. Bone Bell. This is a clenchy moment. Oh my god, he's is he gonna die to it? Oh my god, he's gonna die! Oh, he almost died to the. <laughs> Yo, my god. Oh, that hurts. That's there were so many things that the Roche could have killed him, the side blades. Oh, it's on the other screen, my bad. What are you trying to do? Oh, there you go. I got him. I got him. What happened there? Rob was communicating through other oh. other screens. Dude. He basically wanted us to show net worth without saying anything. Because he's a nice guy who doesn't like to interrupt conversation. That's really good. The crazy part We're is I about the same Rob. I don't know if you know this, but I can't see very well at all past like three feet. Really? But I saw that. So I'm like, I'm pretty happy. Okay, oh. come on, bud. Can they, can the stream hear Rob right now? No, no, no. No, they can't, no, they no. Can't hear Rob. Okay, so they just think we're talking to ourselves. It's fine. He's flaming me. It's fine. I mean, it would be, you know, par for the course for me, so. Woo! I mean, I lecture undergraduates for a living. You know, I, I used to be an econ major. Uh, I, I know. You, you told me this. Yeah. You Wait, what's with this used to be thing? Well, I'm not in college anymore. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> and, yeah. But it's not like, you, okay, well, all right, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's just the way you said that. It was like, I used to be an econ major, but then I switched to a real major. Yeah. It's like, all right, I'm triggered. I, I, like I should have just said majors it. Now? Oh. I wanted to, like, really increase my hiring potential, so I started doing, like, creative art. And <laughs> the face change was beautiful. <laughs> that was great. Hit escape on your... Keyboard. Oh, there you go. Easy. Why am I stuck on? All right. Whatever. So what happens is when you're spectating in Dota TV, if you click a hero, it will never leave that hero. But if you hit escape, it will go like cycle through the items. I don't know. It's. it's I don't remember that being a thing. But it's been a thing forever. Okay. Like, yeah. Literally All right. forever. It's only when you spectate through Dota TV though. That's the oh, weird part okay. About yeah, it. that's the thing. That's my problem. I've been watching like mostly Twitch streams now. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice when everything's automated, pretty much. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I become very lazy in my Dota spectating because I try to follow multiple games at once. Dude, when I when I first started casting, I had to do like my own obsing casting, and I, I when the first time I had like script for wet boss observer game, I was just like, this is the best. <laughs> yeah, I really. Literally, I literally didn't have to do anything except for talk about the game. Yeah. yeah. And then I like, I can flame them for missing kills. Right. I don't have to take take the heat for it, you know. It's a good life. Less responsibility, make you look better, get zero credit. Observers. Actually, that's not true. They do get credit. They do get credit, and it's well deserved. Yeah. I mean that that it's such a huge quality of life improvement for all involved. Because for a long time, people even in the Dota scene were against it. Like I think Starcraft, oh. they had yeah. Adabisi, right? Yeah, they and, had um, Adabisi. They had some other, somebody else too. I can't remember his name. 
but for a long time everyone was like ranting and raving about them and we, we were just like no we can't we have to have the play by play caster do the observing <sighs> And it, it just. Which I always thought I, I I just never understood that. Well, I, I'll say for my own thing, I actually even when there's an observer, I will still observe as if I'm I'm the main obs because yeah, otherwise it's hard for me to follow the game. That's like, fair enough. I think it's it, it, like um, you know the problem where the problem that we almost had um, at Manila where initially it looked like our analysts were not going to have independent camera control mm. and we had to make the point that hey look no people that are doing analytical co-casting absolutely need to be able to check items constantly and yeah. and, and look at what they want to look at yeah. I mean a lot of stuff you can I guess deduce through like the mini map and movements and stuff like that and how the fight actually goes but yeah it's 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 pretty nice to have your own camera as an analyst, you can control. No, you have to. You have to. But I, that's the thing. I also give PGL a lot of credit for, like, you know, they, they obviously came to the table with a lot of innovation, but they also did a really good job of listening to people. Oh, yeah. my God. That's Warlock maybe ulti. the deadest Marana I've ever seen. <laughs> so much damage dealt. That guy got um, dunked into another dimension. Well, and suddenly Faceless are just, like, taking tier threes like it ain't no thing. Yeah, you just... On that's top of ABBA. Well, this is the difference in the way that their lineup scales. They have exactly. so much physical damage. They can just hit the tower. Jeez. They don't... They don't really have to wait. Well, tier three starting to fall, and doesn't really feel like there's anything that Signature Trust can do to stop this. I mean, they've kind of well, Epi's still up, but they're not really getting a good chance for him to go in. Oh my God! They okay, just destroyed Morana again. Rip. All right. Well, this might just be game. Black's yeah, gonna is. run in, and Lakel trying to keep him alive. There's, there's absolutely no reason they have to back. Oh, breaking Lincoln's chasing. They won't kill him, but. This should be two lanes of barracks easy. All right, Epicenter wants to go in. Does he have it? Oh, <laughs> oh God. Nine. God. Oh, that hurts. There's time lapse. And, and he's dead. And that's game. Oh, now my they, God. Maybe the Sanking buys back. They might try to fight again. They have two buybacks. Okay, maybe not. Maybe they just let their undying die. They have Dazzle that's back. Up. It, it's going to so. be like 300, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I think this game is like... You needed a, a way to go high ground as Sig Trust before Faceless got enough farm on their heroes. Yeah. And I just didn't see how that was going to happen. Like, the Sand King just had to completely crush the game. Yes. And that's that Again, that's the, the big problem when you start putting heroes like Sand King and Undying together is that you, you have very scary fight. You have very scary fighting, but after you win a fight, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know, they're not going to hit buildings. They're not necessarily going to clear waves that quickly. That's like the Ursa syndrome. Except that Ursa can actually kill Ursa. Yeah, and that's the thing. Ursa can actually take objectives. See, that's why I think something like DP has a place in the meta again or something. Or like white teams yeah. are turning to Pugna. Like you have, Pugna. instead of Marana going and like going for like an Ags build where you can fight, if you drop something like a Pugna into this lineup, and then you, you know, have the ward that helps you in the team fights to turn it around against Rubik, against Timbersaw, and you like have a way to take high ground with Aether Lens and Nether Blast. I think that's why we've been seeing a lot of Pugna, because like you said, you have a lot of heroes that can fight, but then the, the real question is, how do you take high ground? Yeah, yeah. Pugna we saw earlier from Fnatic, and it was really strong. Yeah. But I think that hero, again, is very niche, and it needs to be mm -hmm. picked fourth or fifth. It cannot be played in, in any other any other time. Otherwise, you just punish the hero super hard. Like, take, for instance, when uh, Fire Dragoon were playing earlier, and they had that Storm mid, right? Yep. And we saw how... Like, the Storm did insanely well, but the rest of his team was just so... They, like, they couldn't do anything yeah. at all. Like, he was 10-0, and zero, died once, and the game was just over. Right. Like, that that's the kind of situation that you kind of need for a Pugna, whereas the lanes are going to be super static, and he can get the lane that he wants, and then you just group and you push behind him. Yep. And that's kind of what Fnatic did when they ran the hero. Otherwise, he becomes food very easily. Um... If he doesn't remain like consistent on item progression, he can become a liability. It's a very hard hero to run well. Yeah, that's, that's also the storm draft is also a good example of when you just know you've lost a draft. Is that you you backed yourself so far into a corner that there really is there's a very small set of heroes that you can pick, and so even though the even though they're they're picked fifth, they're already sort of countered. Yeah, I mean that that storm I felt so bad for because he was playing so well. Yeah, and then he gets stunned one time mm -hmm. in a team fight. Yep. Having a godlike streak, and he gave it to the PA, the who PA, then immediately yeah. turned around and bought a Deso. And then it's, and it's like, like, all right, well, <laughs> you were owning, and then you died once, yeah. and now you lose. Damn! Damn. Oh, look at that.
Yeah, that makes sense, but it is devastating to look at. And I mean, when you break base, the, the golden experience advantage gets out of control. Interesting, Nuts, Nuts does not always go for a Midas on his Warlock. He plays the hero, I, I think he just understands it so well, yes, and it's yeah. the early laning stage that really just allows him to kind of go a, a number of different routes, whether he wants to go for, I think I've seen him go mech once even. Mm -hmm. uh, always, almost always I feel like there's an urn, um, even if it ends up being a Midas later as well. But his his like laning stage, and, and the other thing is that people, like even Wings was running Warlock as a support leading up to TI6, and they tended yeah. to take it with a lot of other strong team fight, and it feels like Faceless are really fitting within that as well. Oh, we're just we're seeing a lot of different teams from a lot of regions play around with that hero, and in different roles too. That Weaver has a heart, huh? Yeah, he does. That guy is never dying. Nope. Weaver. And now I'm stuck on a side trap. Yeah. That's <laughs> oh wait, did they have E Blade? Yeah, they have E Blade, right? On the morph. Oh, it should be yeah, out by now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Of e Blade, Lincoln's Aquila. Well, I mean, 29 minutes isn't super late for that combination. I mean, you, you uh, can hit it. It's you a little, yeah, it's a little Cal's morphling. In. I'm just used to him posting these ridiculous item timings. Oh. Man. They're playing it safe. I mean, this is the thing, though. It's like, I don't know how you punish Faceless here, because they're not... They tend to draft where they're not weak in lane. They tend to play conservative through the early stages and then just execute well in team fights, and then they don't, like, overextend and pushes generally. So I don't know where you punish. So he's saying they're a good team. <laughs> they're a really good that team. That is exactly like, what he's saying. Uh, in this particular instance, I think you, you you just had to you had to really shut down the timber saw early on. The thing is, a lot of the this like C Dota to me is very heavily draft oriented mm -hmm. because a lot of the teams have an idea. Mm -hmm. All all Dota right now is very draft oriented, but they they just don't have a good plan for their idea. If that makes sense, like they're, they're like I, I get it. They're like, okay, well, we want to pick these heroes that are aggressive. We're gonna yep. get this blink on Sand King, and we're gonna go get them. And yep. then they realize that wards exist. No, that's yeah, yeah, and they're they're gonna just call it straight up here, and I, I think that's the right decision. No, I think that's I, I think that's a good point that there are a lot of a lot of times that you see these teams have a basic lineup concept. It's it's kind of a good idea, but they they're just not polished in some respects. They lack some of the finer points of execution that are needed yeah. to make that lineup work. But you're also putting yourself into a corner when you pick Sig Trust Draft because it's like yeah. you have this mid sand king and you're expecting big things out of this mid sand king. And when he doesn't deliver, and you're playing against, you know, dual physical damage scaling cores that are both yeah. very hard to kill and a timber saw on top of that, then all of a sudden you're just at a point where you reach a timer and then game is uh, game is hard. Yeah. Did you see your face go by there, by the way? What? The Pac-Man thing? I hate it.